other than that, did you feel comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
fashion, but you may lose their out on my right hand side. So I think that's about all. And um, we have confetti, please put it outside.
and love. Without you, we cannot please you. Without your love, our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, that we may worship you now with thankful hearts and serve you always with willing minds. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our opening hymn is Amazing Grace, which should be familiar to most people. in heart, 
body and mind, as Christ is united with his bride, the church. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of sexual union and joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It is given as the foundation of family life, in which children are born and nurtured, and in which each member of the family, in good times and in bad, may find strength, companionship and comfort, and grow to maturity in love. Marriage is a way of life made holy by God, and blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, with those celebrating a wedding at Canaan in Galilee. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty, which all should uphold and honour. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly, but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Simon and Bethany are now to enter this way of life. They will each give their consent to the other and make solemn vows. In token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. We pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfill God's purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. Now, first, I am required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why these people may not lawfully marry to declare it now. Now, Simon and Bethany, the vows you are about to take have been made in the presence of God, who is judge of all and knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. Simon, will you take Bethany to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour and protect her, and forsaking all others be faithful to her, as long as you both shall live? I will. Bethany, will you take Simon to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others be faithful to him, as long as you both shall live? Now, the congregation, will you, the families and friends of Simon and Bethany, support and uphold them in their marriage, now and in the years to come? Amen. Let's pray. God, our Father, from the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessings upon Simon and Bethany that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, in holiness and commitment to each other. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Who brings this woman to be married to this man? I do. <coughs> It's my privilege to be your perfect father, to watch you grow up into the beautiful woman you are today. I'm incredibly proud of you and all that you've achieved. I'm so blessed to have you as my daughter. Simon, I welcome you into my family today. I welcome you as a son and thank you for making my daughter happy. Now it gives me great pleasure to hand you over to your to Simon today.
out into how from this day forward from this day forward for better for worse for better for worse for richer for poorer for richer for poorer in sickness and in health in sickness and in health to love and to cherish to love and to cherish to death us to part to death us to part according to God's holy law according to God's holy law in the presence of God I make this vow in the presence of God I make this vow I, Bethany Sean Yvonne, take you, Simon. I, Bethany Sean Yvonne, take you, Simon. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love, cherish, and obey. To love, cherish, and obey. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God, I make this vow. In the presence of God, I make this vow. Ring <coughs> Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to Simon and Bethany, a symbol of unending love and faithfulness, to remind them of the vow and covenant which they have made this day, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bethany, I give you this ring. Bethany, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. With my body I honour you. With my body I honour you. All that I am I give to you. All that I am I give to you. And all that I have I share with you. And all that I have I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> Bless. 
Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And in Ecclesiastes, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labour. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Thank you. We're now going to sing our next song, Here is Love Vast as the Ocean. Would you please sing?
Bring them together in heart and mind and guide them in your ways. May you always be at the very centre of their marriage. Bring them what you desire and show them how you help them be. Bless this marriage and pray and walk this out better and silent throughout their lives together. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we conclude our prayer by saying together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> now, Holy Cole is going to come. Good afternoon. Start by saying what a massive honour it is for me to be speaking to you today as we come together to celebrate uh, and witness as Beth and Simon begin to build their marriage together. I use that word build very deliberately. See, I'm convinced that constructing a marriage is very much like constructing a building. Let me try and explain what I mean by that. In southeastern Turkey, there's a complex of buildings called Gebekli Tepe. They've been there for 11,000 years. To try and put that into some perspective, that makes them more than twice as old as Stonehenge. That means that at some point in the very dim and distant past, somebody set out to construct something to such a high standard that it's still standing today. I mean, sure, some of the edges have got a bit crumbly, but fundamentally, the buildings are still sound. They've seen good times and bad times, times of peace and comfort and relative ease, and times of difficulty and challenge. And yet, while the times around them have changed, those buildings have stood firm. My prayer for your marriage is that it would have something of that about it. That your life may throw up good times and bad times, that your marriage will stand firm. See, I don't believe that constructing something to that kind of standard and with that kind of quality happens by accident. I don't think somebody uh, appeared in that place and thought, well, I'll throw a shack up here, but I'll just use kind of bits that I find lying around on the floor. Now, if you want to build something with that kind of staying power, you've got to plan it out a little bit. You've got to think very carefully about which construction materials you use. Gobekli Tepe is constructed of very large limestone blocks. You can't call it a marriage from those, I'm afraid. But we've had read to us today some passages of scripture that include some construction materials that you very much can use to build a marriage with. We've heard kind of about sincerity. Sincerity is a, a kind of all open honesty, complete transparency. This is all of me. We've heard about devotion. Devotion is that act of putting your whole self into something, completely committing yourself to something. We've heard also about selfless honouring, the habit of putting another person's needs before your own. From now on, I come second and you come first. We've heard about zeal. Zeal is uh, passion, it's the opposite of apathy, it's fire. We've heard about joy. Joy is a lot more than just feeling happy. Joy is a, a deep down, deep seated contentment and satisfaction. It goes significantly beyond circumstances. We've heard also about patience. Patience is so important in marriage. See, there will be days, I'm sure, when Simon says exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. But those of us who have been married a little while will know there are likely also to be days when Simon says exactly the wrong thing at exactly the wrong time. And at those times, that's a good use of patience. See, patience is about choosing to see good in somebody. Patience is about bearing with one another. We've also heard about faithfulness. As it was read to us, it was read in the context of prayer. Don't give up praying for each other. And I would urge you, continue to pray for each other. But I think you can apply that idea of faithfulness also to love. Don't give up loving each other. Wake up each day making a commitment and a decision to be faithful in your love. We heard also about support. How precious it is to know that as you walk through life, if you were to stumble or, or fall, there is always somebody there to help you up. And we heard also about defending each other. Likewise, it's so good to know that there is always, always someone on your side and always somebody who's got your back. These are 
These are solid building materials. Sincerity, devotion, selfless wondering, zeal, joy, patience, faithfulness, support, and defense of one another. If you build something with this, it's likely that what you construct is going to last a long time. Those of us that have known Beth and Simon for a little while would have seen that there's already been a fair amount of building going on. I've been so impressed and inspired, in fact, by the way that they've shown devotion and support for one another through various stages of life, through uh, health challenges and changes in employment. Their support for one another is so inspiring. If you spend an evening with them, you'll see the way that they bring so much joy out of each other. And if you have cause to talk with them about their plans for the future, you'll see how patient and sensitive uh, and, and, and uh, helpful they are with one another's dreams and plans. Now, there has been a lot of building already going on here, but I would urge you to keep building with those quality materials. I talked already about a, uh, a set of buildings in Turkey. I want to talk about another building now, a house called uh, Wentworth Woodhouse. Uh, Wentworth Woodhouse, it would be fair to say, uh, is quite an impressive pad. It has 365 rooms. Uh, it has an internal floor space of approximately two and a half acres. You imagine having a house that's got two and a half acres of internal floor space in it. When the builder was setting out to build this house, uh, the most important thing in his mind was not the budget. The most important thing in his house was that he was setting out to construct the finest residential dwelling in England. And he achieved something pretty close to that. The building materials here are not shoddy. There is nothing wrong with the building materials. The problem was that local mining in the area had damaged the foundations of Wentworth Woodhouse. It was in danger of falling down. The repair that was needed was costly and time-consuming and technically very challenging. It was a difficult thing to do. The simple fact is, sometimes even if you build with very fine materials, if the foundations are not strong, we might run into problems. Jesus told a story about two people who set out to build a house. The first man uh, came to a beach and he found flat sand and a beautiful coastal view and he thought this looks like the perfect place to start building. He put one brick on top of another brick on top of another brick and it wasn't long before he had a wall and two walls and three walls and four walls and the roof went on and he was feeling quite pleased with himself with his house on the beach. He looked further inland and there was another man trying to construct a building. This man had decided to build on, on rock and he was hacking away over with a pickaxe trying to get a flat piece of land to build on. It looked like hard work, it was difficult. It took a long time. Anyway, eventually both houses were built and then the weather turned. The, the, a storm came in, the, the floodwaters rose, the wind got up. And what started as a little crack in the corner of the house on the sand eventually became quite a serious structural problem. The roof collapsed, the walls fell down. Meanwhile, the house on the rocks had fell. Jesus finished his story by looking at people listening, saying, the wise man, the wise person, builds their life on my teachings. It's like building your house on rock. What does it mean to build on that foundation of Jesus' teachings? Well, first I think we need to consider briefly what Jesus taught. One of the uh, main things that he taught was that humans have a problem. The issue is that every time a human decides to go their own way, every time a human decides that they only need God, that God's way isn't what's right for them, but that their own way is better. Every time they decide to trust themselves and not him, they create a separation between them and God who loves them and cares for them and knows what's best for them. What Jesus said is that he had come full of love to sacrifice himself. So that by believing in him, we can have that restoration with that, that our relationship with God restored. In so doing, we receive the promise of eternal life and the secure knowledge that there is a God who loves us and cares for us and knows what's best for us. That's a solid foundation, but what does it mean to build your life on that? What would it mean for you to build your relationship and your marriage on that? But I think really it comes down to trust. It's an absolute decision to rely on him every day. It's a commitment that he knows what's best. A commitment to live how he sets out to go his way. Importantly, it's a commitment to believe that he's faithful and unchanging, kind and strong and good. So as I finish, let me encourage you as you build your marriage together to build with quality materials. Build with sincerity and devotion. Build with selfless honouring of each other. Build with zeal and joy and patience. Build with faithfulness. Build by supporting each other and defending each other. And build on the solid foundation of Jesus. And can I say that I am so looking forward to coming and visiting the home that you're building today. God bless you both.
Now, before we come to the final hearing, I have one, uh, two announcements to make, really. One is that there are little bags on the left-hand side as you go out. And if you're going to the reception, you not only take the bag with the gifts inside it, but also it's got the white ticket to let you in to Woburn Safari Park. Yes, Woburn Safari Park. If you don't have the ticket, they'll feed you to the lions. <laughs> so uh, you need your ticket to go in, so please pick up your bag. But there's also a plate there for anyone who'd like to give an offering towards the ministry for this church. So, we come to the conclusion of the service, and I ask you all to stand as we sing the final